In the 1950s, the Chinese used to say the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics USSR of today is the China of tomorrow. Almost four decades later, the USSR got divided into 15 new republics. This is how the Cold War between the US and its allies of the free world on one side and the Soviet and its communist allies on the other side ended. What the Chinese, however, used to say in the 1950s is absolutely true. The Soviet Union of today is the China of tomorrow. And for that to hold true, the People's Republic of China must lose its occupied territories and get fragmented into a parlous state. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster and its cover-up led to the Soviet disintegration and the coronavirus pandemic could mark the end of the People's Republic of China. China is a hand-dominated occupational force and there are seven countries, Tibet, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Xinjiang, which is also East Turkestan, Manchuria, Chengdu and Zhangzhou within the communist nation who wouldn't hate the idea of breaking out of the autocratic regime. China has been muting reports of protests against CCP's one-party rule in all these countries. The main force driving these regions towards revolutions that could split the country is the racial domination of the Han Chinese. The minorities are thus being attacked aggressively and Beijing has been trying to flood Han migrants into these regions such as Tibet. Identity politics is a big issue in China. Muslim Uyghurs from Xinjiang and Buddhist Tibetans are, for example, resisting attempts at assimilation. Forced Hanification at times results into violent reactions. The Manchu people in Manchuria are also ethnically different from the Hans. They are an ethnic minority in China facing domination from the Han Chinese ethnic group. With the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent aggression, China has actually put itself in the same place as the Soviet Union in the 1980s. First, the COVID-19 pandemic made the world realize the perils of an autocratic communist regime trying to create a new world order for itself. Then Chinese aggression in the South China Sea and the LAC at Eastern Ladakh has led to the creation of a new front against China. The United States is revamping its military strategy and shifting focus from Russia to China. The US-led NATO is also recognizing China as the main threat. Recently, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said the rise of China is fundamentally shifting the global balance of power, multiplying the threats to open societies and individual freedoms and increasing the competition over our values and our way of life. He also urged like-minded countries to join the military alliance to stand up against bullying and coercion in world affairs. China is flexing its muscles not just in the South China Sea, in the East China Sea and claiming sovereignty on Japanese islands apart from spiking military tensions with India at the line of actual control that is the LAC in Eastern Ladakh. China is the bully of the Indo-Pacific region which is why the United States is redeploying its troops towards this part of the world. On Thursday, the US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the actions of the Chinese Communist Party meant there were threats to India and countries such as Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines and the South China Sea. The US military is postured appropriately to meet these challenges of our time. The US is also becoming increasingly vocal on issues like human rights violations of Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province, Tibet's rights of self-determination, China's move to rob Hong Kong of liberties and Taiwan's separate existence. Cracks have appeared in Jinping's hold over the Communist Party of China, which is the CCP, given the catastrophic handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this gives an opportunity to the Shanghai faction, which is led by Jiang Zemin, and the Beijing faction, which is led by Hu Jintao, to weaken Xi Jinping's position. The US-led coalition against China, India's rise on the world stage, Internal disturbances and Xi Jinping's depleting stature hint at China's day of reckoning. The new world order might as well witness a divided and a powerless China.